G'day, my name's Paul West and I'm out here at Gin and Derry at GX and I'm here to teach a couple of masterclasses. And for one of them, I'm gonna do fish tacos with beautiful snapper, some tomato salsa, a sour cream sauce. It's a piece of cake to throw together. There's so much flavor going on there. Let's go check it out. So today we're gonna to be cooking some fish tacos. Uh, and this is, I, this is like something that I guess uh, is a little bit of a cheat thing for me because I'm on the south coast. Uh, so we could do a bit of fishing, we do catching some fish, but you know, this was from a market here in Belconnen and that's a nice looking snapper there. So, you know, it's not to say that just because you can't live near the coast, you can't enjoy the, uh, the spoils of it. We're gonna marinate this fish first. Uh, I mean, it's got plenty of flavor uh, to begin with. But before I do that, uh, I just, you know, the last thing you want to do is get a bone and with snapper, they just have these intercostal bones that run down between these two fillets, like a lot of white flesh fish. And rather than get the pin boners out or the tweezers, you can just kind of cut either side of it and, uh, and keep the fillet relatively intact and just take all those bones out like that. Uh, I will leave the skin on these. It's totally up to you. You can leave skin on, skin off. It's um, a matter of preference, really, rather than finished product. If I was, if these were going to be like the showpiece of like a plated meal, definitely skin on. Looks so much better when you get that beautiful bit of crispy skin. That drawer just tried to attack me. <laughs> Keeps coming back for more. I've got no idea how to shut that drawer. <laughs> Back right in my house, when drawers get closed, they stay closed. Now I've got his mate. <laughs> I've got the one underneath it now. I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing wrong there, uh, but I'm obviously doing something wrong. Um, yes, I still feel very grateful to be set loose in this lovely new home. <laughs> so we'll just take those out, uh, which will take two seconds. All right, sweet. We're gonna make a little bit of marinade for this now. So, a little bit of olive oil. Nice covering over the whole lot. So this way, the fish has already got a nice coating of oil, so when it comes to cook, especially doing it on the barbecue, you don't have to worry about oiling the grill or anything so much. You can just um, put the fish straight on because it's already oiled. Uh, and then we'll take a little bit of the chili powder. The cumin comes later. And really, this is uh, a little bit of like chili or cayenne, some oil and some coriander, which I'm gonna finally chop, and some lime juice. And that's the, the kind of classic fish uh, taco seasoning for the marinade. And really, you can, you can kind of do it for as long as you want. But I'd say for a minimum half hour. And then, because fish can actually cook with the acidity of the lime juice, like a ceviche, something like that. So I wouldn't go any more than two hours. I know I literally just said you can do it as long as you want, but don't do it any more than two hours. <laughs> so about, in total, probably about one and a half teaspoons. And then we're gonna put the juice of a couple of limes on there as well. Give them a bit of a roll to help release the juice from the fibers inside the lime. And then pop it in half. And then uh, you can get a little like stool or a little chair or something, but really like you're trying to go as high as possible, just to look good. Pretty much, there's no reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love there to be, uh, but you know, but it's classic, whenever you see people cooking on television, they're doing these ones, then you know, they're like, oh. <laughs> so good, that's how you gotta do it, kids. Uh, and that's what's really lacking from shows like MasterChef, I feel, because they're so nervous and they're, you know, they're, big, they're trying to be really serious. They don't get to put any flair in their cooking, uh, which is, you know, flair's where it's at. Uh, so I'm just gonna go the double grip on this one. You wanna be a little bit less giving with your juice to your mate? No worries. Gotcha. Uh, of course, you could actually use like a juicer, you know, like a little reamer or something like that if you wanted to be, you know, fancy um, or practical, whatever. But that also works. So it doesn't really take a great deal of dressing uh, and we'll put a little bit of salt on there as well. Uh, and then just rub it in so we get a nice little bit of coating on there. And that'll pop in the fridge for half an hour in this case, but definitely no more than two. Uh, I might, because 
There's so much fish there. I'm gonna do it in the oven instead. Uh, so usually I'd do that on the barbecue, uh, but because I'm down to one cast iron pan and 14 people or 12 people and all that fish, in this case, I'm gonna go off script and I'm gonna do it in the oven. Our fish is marinating, uh, but a fish taco is not built purely on fish alone, a wise man once said. Uh, no, I said that, I just made that up. Uh, so we're going to do some sh a shredded cabbage salad. Uh, and I like, mandolins are probably the best way to get things super fine. You know what I mean by a mandolin? Like a really, like a razor blade set into a plastic thing. They're so savage though. Uh, and you will lose a fingertip at some stage if you've never used one before. Uh, so we want to shred that nice, nice and fine. Uh, and you, like, you can kind of shave it really well just off the whole, the whole cabbage like that. But I like to just take out some of the outer leaves and just give yourself a little bit more of a, a flat prospect to work with. So you want to make sure that's nice and thin uh, because when you cut cabbage really thinly, it's actually really nice. It's got the beautiful, it's sweet, it's, it's juicy, like I can feel the moisture coming out of that even now just sitting there. Uh, and it's got a fantastic texture, especially for salads and things like that. It's like so crisp and crunchy uh, that, that we really crave that, that variety of texture when it comes to our vegetable cookery. So there we go. Uh, and into that, we're also, I, uh, turns out I didn't put the coriander in with the fish marinade, that's cool. We're gonna use it here instead. So I might, you can just give it a, like a little tear or just a rough chop. Don't get too uh, fussy about running over that. As long as it's kind of mouth size bits, that's fine. There we go. Give that a bit of a mix. Uh, and then also in there, we're going to pop a thinly sliced red onion. So again, thinner the better, more texture, more colour. And uh, I'm gonna try and keep these as whole rings because I just think it looks so much better. And to do that, I might just pop a little flat spot off there. And then I just like to pop the, if there's any like yellow bits in the middle where you've got that little bit of the germ from the sprouting onion, I just like to pop them out because they don't taste the best. There we go. Break those rings up. Okay, so there's the, the bones of our, um, of our cabbage salad, which, you know, has ever a more appealing sentence been uttered. There is the bone of our, the bones of our cabbage salad. Uh, you can just see people clambering to line up for a taste right now. But, you know, there's a lot of, what have I done this time? Is it the drawers beeping at me this time? Uh, oh, the set temperature has reached. You're better than those drawers, oven. <laughs> I can clearly see you two are here to help. <laughs> Not like you two, just here to embarrass me and trip me up. So, you know, on paper, it doesn't sound very appealing, but when you add that, those thin slices of onion, you've got that coriander for that beautiful bit of herbal punch, uh, and we'll dress it with uh, some cumin, some lime juice, and some chili. Just a little bit of chili. Actually, we'll leave the chili out. then all of a sudden it starts to become a much more appealing affair. And a little bit of red wine vinegar in there as well. Just probably because we've got lime juice everywhere else in this dish. And you can, you can mix it up separately if you like, but I think the, like when it comes to making salads, the easiest way to dress them is to make the dressing on the actual leaves itself. So to do that, first a coating of olive oil, and that protects the leaves. Uh, from the acidity of that component uh, while also enriching it. You're like, so you want oil in the salad because fat is flavour. Our brains are naturally drawn towards it. If you strip the fat out of all the food that you eat, then you kind of, it's quite bland uh, and you end up using compensating in other ways like sugar. Uh, but when you add high quality fats, especially things like vegetable oil, uh, it really lifts, especially salads, uh, lifts that flavour a lot. And then we'll put a little bit of that red wine vinegar on. Was that the second time I put it on? I can't, it was, okay. Just to, what I meant to say was pop a little bit more red wine vinegar on. It wasn't long enough. It's fine. Oh, no, it's turned into a, it's melted. 
Too much vinegar. I melted the salad. Sorry, everyone. No, it's fine. This is uh, freestyle. And then about, for this volume, probably about two teaspoons worth of that cumin. There we go. All right, lovely. Now we'll quickly just whip up this salsa by taking these tomatoes. I'm gonna cube them up, chop it up with some of that Spanish onion uh, or that red onion. And then we'll, finally we'll make a little bit of a sour cream dressing just to finish it off. So I just like to quarter the tomatoes and take that little, uh, little bit of pith out with a little bit of stem at the very top. But we want to keep it nice and chunky because we don't want to be here till five o'clock dicing tomatoes or making tomato concasse like we were in some fancy fine dining French restaurant. What we want to do is uh, make this for our friends and get out and enjoy the rest of the barbecue instead of being stuck in the kitchen. And so it's about getting food that's really easy to prepare but big on flavour. And so this one is pretty straightforward. This is actually probably the most complicated recipe I've done all day. Just to, you know, just to throw a spanner in the works for myself for the last one. Uh, so we'll just dice that up. And then we'll just roughly chop this. There we go. So again, we're gonna use that kind of staple of uh, Mexican seasoning, the cumin, in there. Uh, maybe about two teaspoons for that volume. Uh, and my salt. And some pepper. And some hand sanitizer. <laughs> go. I'm not putting heaps of pepper in, this is just a really crappy grinder from my, you know, one that I bought from home. Just one of those ones that you like. <laughs> so I might just put a little dash of that red wine vinegar in there, just to give it a little bit more tang. I've already put it in there, do not put it in there again. Okay, so we're starting to get our components for our tacos coming together. While that's happening, I'm going to put the fish in the oven and praying this oven's hot. Yes. Don't be even me like that. Uh, here we go. So you could just you could fry it, uh, but I just feel like it's where I'm going to be a little bit pressed for time today to fry this in batches. Ideally, char grill on the barbecue would be my absolute number one way to do it. So you get those beautiful sear marks across there, especially over like a, a wood, a wood coal uh, barbecue. It's hard to beat that kind of smoke infused flavour. I'll just spread them out there. And we're going to pop that in. That'll probably be about 15 minutes, I reckon. Uh, and so, two components left to go. Uh, so we're going to go 50-50 yogurt and sour cream for this sauce. Our fish is ready! Oh, mostly ready, the, the smaller bits were. Let me just have a quick check on here. And one of the, uh, like a nice way to see if your, especially white fleshed fish like this, is cooked, is you can see the kind of the grain where you like, you know, fish kind of have that like diangular, uh, diangular, <laughs> diagonal flesh pattern as they go up, where you can see those little separations. And if you can get in and you can just fork it apart in just one spot, yeah, that's good. That's good. And I mean, using a, a wooden fork like that's not particularly discreet, uh, but if you're just, you know, you're worried about presentation, that's how the chefs and restaurants get around it. You know, if it's a skin side, the skin side's cooked, you just quickly flip it over, and on the underside you see a little skewer or something just to try and tease the meat apart, and if those, the grain comes apart, then it's cooked. Um, and rather than fry all of these in that fry pan, I'm just going to chuck them in the oven. Because we're nearly there, folks, for a scintillating afternoon of cooking with Paul. There we go. Just gently peel those off. There we go, so we'll get these fish off. 
I'll whip that. Oh, it's so, so big and tender. Beautiful. And these only really need, you know, 30 seconds to a minute in there, just enough to... Oh. <sighs> okay. Serving boats. We're gonna do it this way. That seems like a... <laughs> seems like a good fit. <laughs> you laugh now, but it'll work. It'll come together, it'll come together once I start putting the fish on there, don't worry. But if you ever contemplate skipping the heating the tortilla step, do not. It's so much better when they're just, where you can either dry roast them in the pan uh, or just a quick run through the oven, whatever you like. Uh, it makes the world a difference. There was something, um, oh, these ones are a bit overdone, but Papa Dumps. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm wishing that I did put two, uh, just two in instead of the rest of the tray, but hey, I'll eat those. They're um, hard shell tacos, that's the key. It's only about a minute difference. Okay. And miraculously, somehow on autopilot through all of that, there's actually food here to eat as well. <laughs> And if you like the look of what you saw there, all the recipes are going to be available on the website. So jump on, download it, have a look and try it at home yourself.